And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. The sun is shining, the skies are blue, and the clouds are, well, they're really photogenic. Yeah, the most importantly, the the skies are clear-ish. <laughs> <laughs> and the rain has stopped. For now, Thankfully. anyhow, the monsoon season yeah. is technically over, so we can rejoice for just a split second before mm. we get some sporadic showers. Yeah, but after rain always comes humidity in the summer as well. So we have that to enjoy as well. <laughs> One of these days we'll stop blaming the weather for our foul mood. <laughs> you know, it, it plays a it plays a big part in how we, uh, our moods play out. I mean, you know, uh, being from the UK where it's always gloomy and rainy, uh, mm. I think I was a bit more depressed when I was in the UK. But of course, <laughs> not so much in Korea because, you know, the weather is not uh, as sporadic and uh, volatile, I mm. guess. Uh, so, yeah. Take the win, Arang. Take the win. It's better than yeah. what you had before. I don't know. I grew up yeah. in California, so nothing compares. Uh, <laughs> so you, it's the other way for you, I guess. <laughs> All right, let's jump into our keyword news portion of the day. We're going to try to clarify these major headlines for our listeners, uh, starting with uh, the Fed's plan for possible rate hikes. This is our first keyword of the day. Rate hike. So the U.S. Fed has raised interest rates to their highest level in more than 22 years, has also signaled another hike in at least uh, at least one on the table or potentially maybe even two in the autumn season. What's the latest on them? Yeah, so just when we thought that maybe we might get a bit of easing on the monetary tightening mm -hmm. policies of the Fed, uh, it seems the, it's anything but. Uh, now, the move nudged the federal funds rate to a range of 5.25 to 5.5 percent. That's the level last seen just prior to the 2007 housing market crash. Now, it further also widens the gap uh, between the key rates of South Korea and the United States to an all-time high of one and three quarters to two percentage points. Now, higher rates in the US are, of course, feared to prompt money outflows from Korea's economy. This, in turn, may weaken the local currency against the dollar while putting upward pressure on inflation by making imports more expensive. Uh, the Fed said that it will continue to assess additional information and its implications uh, for monetary policy. Uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell acknowledged inflation slowdown in June, but added that while it's uh, that added that it's just a uh, one report and just one month of data so it's nothing mm. uh significantly um going to Im impact the fed's decision for now now he said the process of lowering inflation to the fed's two percent goal has a long way to go uh, he said the labor market continues to be strong noting the fed wants to bring supply and demand in the economy and labor market into uh, better balance. Now, noting the Fed will see two more inflation reports and two jobs reports before its next meeting in September, Powell hinted at another rate hike possibly at the meeting in September, mm. or that the Fed could remain steady. The wide, uh, widely acknowledged expectation is that it will uh, hike again uh, the rate in September and mm. possibly one in the fall uh, as well. So, yeah, this uh, that might, of course, put more pressure on the Bank of Korea to raise its interest rates. It's uh, stayed pat for now, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll have to see if it wants to close that gap between Korea uh, and the U.S. All right, so we'll wait and see. Let's move on to our second keyword of the day. Korean War Commemoration. So as we've alluded to, various events have been held to commemorate 70 years since the signing of the Armistice Agreement of the Korean War. Can you tell us the details? Yes, uh, President Yoon led a ceremony at Seoul Air Base to repatriate the remains of seven fallen soldiers from the Korean War. The remains were confirmed as Korean military personnel through a joint uh, Korean uh, American inspection. Now, among the fallen soldiers, only Private Choi Im Nak's uh, identity was confirmed. Uh, before the repatriation ceremony, Yoon actually met with Private Choi's family and expressed relief over Choi coming back to his homeland after 73 years. Uh, Yoon saluted uh, until the f uh, funeral carriage departed Seoul Air Base for Seoul National Cemetery, where the remains uh, will be laid to rest. Uh, the presidential office stated that the remaining six remains whose identities have not been confirmed yet will be further 
verify through record analysis, uh, detailed inspection and DNA testing. Uh, meanwhile, a banquet was also held in Busan, where fallen Korean war veterans from the UN Allied Nations were remembered and honoured for their service uh, 70 years ago. Uh, tomorrow, the actual day of the 70th anniversary of the signing of the armistice, uh, a commemorative event will be held at the location where the first ever deployed U.S. military unit, known as Task Force Smith, arrived in Korea during the war. Hmm. About 4,000 people are expected to attend, uh, including 170 representatives from 25 U.N. participant countries, uh, as well as veterans and key governments and military figures. Mm, I think there was a typo. Today, the 27th, uh, marking the 70th anniversary of the armistice. So, uh, there I'm you... sorry, today. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> and we're all caught up. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> all right, let's move on to our third key word of the day. Teacher authority. So the government and the ruling People Power Party agreed to revise a set of laws that will give teachers more authority and protect their rights. There has been this outcry from teacher unions, teachers in general, and the public demanding more rights for the teachers, and especially in the classroom. So can you tell us the details? Yeah, so this has been kind of a kind of a long-standing issue, mm-hmm. long, uh, uh, a kind of prolonged kind of concern, but it actually unfortunately took the death of a young teacher to actually get some action uh, started. Mm. Uh, The government and the ruling party agreed to produce a guideline uh, for such measures within uh, next month. This comes amid, of course, public calls to restore the authority of teachers in schools after that apparent suicide of the elementary school teacher uh, in Sotho district uh, in southern Seoul. Now, the agreement also comes after President Yoon ordered such guidelines uh, as well. Now, The two sides will also work with education authorities to revise ordinances that infringe upon educational rights based on these guidelines. Uh, Furthermore, they plan to address the issue of excessive workload among especially rookie teachers, which has been identified as a contributing factor in the death uh, of that teacher in Sotcho, who was Mm -hmm. in her early 20s, and the allocation of teacher duties uh, at schools as well. There's been some concerns as well that teachers... Uh, have been obliged to do uh, other types of work outside of basically teaching in the classroom. Uh, Now, as for the inclusion of infringements by students on teachers' authorities in school records, the People Power Party said related legal revisions would require uh, cooperation from the uh, main opposition Democratic Party. So we'll have to see if there is any agreement Uh, on that between the rival Mm. parties. Now, the PPP said the two sides also agreed on granting immunity to teachers when engaging in reasonable instruction while flatly denying the possibility of allowing corporal punishment uh, in the latest measures. Now, the guidelines will also include a manual on how to deal with parents as well who interfere um, with school affairs. Now, of course, another uh, reason uh, Mm. for that apparent suicide was, of course, that a par- uh, a parents uh, of a particular student were being a bit too excessive in their mm. um, involvement and interference in the teacher's duties. And that's, of course, uh, not just isolated in that mm. uh, incident, but has been a long-standing issue uh, as well. Now, the two sides also reached an agreement to revise the Student Human Rights Ordinance that has been kind of widely criticised, especially recently, as giving kind of excessive protection Mm. uh, to students. I mean, it has um, been praised as well for giving them a bit more uh, freedom uh, as well. And protection for students. Protection, but uh, maybe, uh, well, critics have said that maybe it's a bit too excessive and students are kind of um, taking advantage of it to some extent uh, Mm -hmm. and parents alike as well. So... Yes, so we'll have to keep our eyes on what guidelines they come up with and whether it will be effective as well. That's the most important question. It certainly seems like they're taking a look at other developed countries and their guidelines. And the more specific these rules and regulations and ordinances are, the more better protected both teachers and students should be. So it's still a work in progress, but we're keeping tabs. Let's move on to our fourth key word of the day. Wastewater. So the government has announced that discussions on the release of wastewater from Fukushima were discussed during a recent working level meeting between Korea and Japan. Will some of those demands be met? What came out of this meeting? 
Yeah, so uh, Pak Guyan, who is the first deputy chief of the Office for Government Policy Coordination, said it was held on Tuesday in Japan. The meeting was conducted as a uh, follow-up to the Korea-Japan summit that was held in Lithuania uh, back on the 12th. Now, he said the six-hour meeting, so it was a very uh, long meeting, addressed Yoon's requests, such as uh, including Korean experts in monitoring the planned release. Uh, of the wastewater. Uh, Park mentioned that besides the discussions, the Korean government presented four recommendations based on what he said were scientific and technological uh, reviews. He noted that the Japanese side has taken full note of these suggestions and emphasized that they would uh, carefully review the content of the discussion. Uh, Park said that the next round of consultations will be held during the first week of August. So ever since that summit, uh, there seems to be um, more discussions and diplomacy regarding uh, the issue. Mm. Whether it's just the Korean government trying to um, uh, agree with the Japanese side in the mm. planned release is what some critics are saying. Uh, whether it'll put its foot down uh, and um, implement its stance and try and persuade Japan to go the other way in terms of releasing the plan, uh, the wastewater, that's another question as well. But we'll have to see how these rounds of uh, consultations and discussions play out but for the moment it does seem mm. like Korea seems to be uh, on board uh, with Japan's plan so it has brought a lot of uh, criticism and opposition especially from the op uh, main opposition party right. but uh, we'll have to see uh, what kind of concessions the Japanese side if any they make. All right. So notice that there are political angles to that story, too. And as for mm. the scientific facts to be more transparent, that, that's what the Korean government is pushing for. Right. So that a Korean expert might be part of that discharge inspection. We'll wait and see. And on to our final keyword of the day. Record revenue. So Hyundai Motor has posted another record high operating profit for the second quarter of this year. Can you tell us the details? Yeah, so uh, this all comes uh, amid kind of a kind of a slumping global economy as well. So it's interesting that uh, the Korean car maker is doing quite well, especially in overseas markets. Uh, Hyundai said its Q2 revenue increased 70.4% on year to 42.2 trillion won. Uh, operating profit rose just over 42% to 4.2 trillion won, uh, netting its highest operating profit for a third consecutive quarter. And of course setting a new record. This was driven by ramped up production, uh, strong sales of high margin vehicles around the world, as well as weak local currency, which kind of um, uh, moved in their favor. Now, the company's operating profit margin for the period hit 10 percent as well, which is the highest since the second quarter of 2013. Uh, net profits came in at just under 3.4 trillion won. That's up about 8.5% from the same period last year and is above market expectations. Uh, Hyundai sold a total of 1.06 million vehicles in global markets in the first quarter. That's up 8.5% on year. The overall sales increased, especially for SUVs and the Genesis luxury models, as well as favorable exchange rates, as I mentioned, help mm. lift. Uh, revenue in the second quarter. Now, the company expects to strengthen sales momentum through production improvements uh, as chip and component supplies stabilize worldwide as well, cementing uh, demand for the brand. So, yes, uh, good news for uh, Hyundai and um, subsequently Kia as well. This is the company, but uh, they're not doing so well in the domestic market uh, <laughs> as they hoped. So we'll have to see what kind of measures they have in place for the local market. You win some, you lose some. Thank you very much, yeah. Adam, for today's coverage. We'll see you tomorrow. You're very welcome. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.